Hey everybody, welcome to Journey Church Online. Glad you're with us today. You know, in just a few moments time, we're gonna worship together. We're gonna get into the Word of God together and we're gonna have a time of communion together. So make sure you grab some supplies wherever you are today and we'll share in communion. And Remember what the Lord has done for us. And so let's go into a time of worship right now.
shoulder and fighting our battles every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is life forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is light that the shadows can't deny your name Come, your name is life forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome, it cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you may. Your silence be Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus.
Jesus, Jesus, your silent spirit. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome no your name It's just great to be able to worship together. You know, as we just uh, take some time today and think about the Lord's Supper, think about what Jesus has done for each one of us. He died, crucified, he died and he rose again. And his blood was shed for your life and for mine to, to wash away all sin, to make us clean and whole and to bring us into relationship and communion with him. And so, as I'm reminded of that today, and, and I pray that as wherever you are today, you would recognize that there is no sin that has caused you to be eliminated from the family of God. There is nothing that you can do that can uh, disqualify you from being part of the family of God. So all you have to do today is just say, Jesus, I love you. I, I open my heart to you, and I receive what you have for me today. So as we just think about what communion means and what Jesus has done for us today. I want us to examine our hearts, to look at what our lives look like today and ask God to show you if there's anything within you that needs to be purified, made holy, uh, being acceptable to him. He accepts you as you are, but being aware of that today. You know, as Jesus was with the disciples uh, at the Last Supper, uh, sitting around the table and, and just sharing one last meal with him, uh, he says this, and I love to quote this scripture very often in 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 23 says this, verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. He had given thanks, and he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me in the same way after... Uh, supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so I want you to take that cracker of the bread today and as you break it, let's just thank the Lord for what this represents. Lord, we thank you for your broken body that was given for us, that you uh, defeated death, hell, and the grave. And we have life in you today because of your broken body today. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Let's receive it together. And the cup represents his blood that was sacrificed, that was shed for the remission of our sins and makes us clean and whole today. And so, Lord, we thank you for what your blood represents, that you purify us as as white, as new, or brand new, new creations in you today. And so we receive your body that was broken and your blood that was shed for us today. And we say thank you. Let's receive it together today. You know, as you receive that, and as we think about what Jesus has offered us today, be reminded that you are part of the family of God and we would love to walk with you and pray with you. And if you need someone to pray with you today, please let us know how we can do that. You can connect with us very simply. Connect at myjourney.church or go to our website. Click on the prayer tabs. We would love to have our prayer team pray with you. You know, we have an incredible prayer team that meets three times in, this, in a week. 
and they would love to pray with you. Or very real time right now, uh, someone would pray with you right in this moment, and we would love to do that today. As I reflect, I find perspective They're in the best, the worst days of this life You are always on my side You're in the pain, you're in the promise And on the days the furnace finds my faith You're the fourth within the flame I don't need to know what the future said Cause if the past could talk it would tell me that My God isn't finished yet If he did it before he could do it again So I'll trust him in what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness yeah, my hindsight says I can trust Him with what's next. For the God I know is known for faithfulness. There's more ahead than what's behind me. And through the highs and lows and in between. God, you go ahead of me. When you call me, I will follow. And if the water falls beneath my feet, then you pull me from the deep. I don't need to know what the future said. Cause if the past could talk, it would tell me that my God isn't finished yet. If he did it before, he could do it again. But I'll trust him in what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness Hindsight says I can trust him with what's next For the God I know is known for faithfulness God isn't finished yet If he did it before he could do it again So I'll trust him in what comes next and My hindsight says I can count on that My God isn't finished yet If he did it before he could do it again So I'll trust him in what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness yeah, my hindsight says I can trust Him with what's next. For the God I know is known for faithfulness. Yeah. Well, it's so good to be able to uh, worship together with you today. And you know, you can just sense the presence of God in your life when you're uh, open to Him. And I pray that you're open to Him in this season of what can be a, a difficult time of year, not necessarily the most wonderful time of year. And so we're very aware of that in this unique season of Christmas. And uh, for, for some people, it's just like, oh, another thing. Listen, we wanna connect with you. We wanna welcome you. 
to be a part of this community. If you want to engage with us, you know, life is better done together and not alone. And so we would love to connect with you. Just simply uh, send us an email, connect at myjourney.church, and someone would love to reach out to you and just let you know how we can be a part of your life and be a part of this community, how you can connect with us and uh, just to see how God can move in your situation today. Um, you know, just as we have opportunities for connection in the next little bit, I want you to just uh, watch in just a moment how you can participate with us in serving uh, financially, uh, great opportunities coming up. But let me just highlight this before we go into that and then go into the Word of God today, is that uh, today, um, I want you to know that you have an opportunity to support people in our community. Right here in our community, right here in Calgary, uh, through gift card uh, gifts. Uh, you know, sometimes at this time of year, people are looking for gifts, they're looking for food, they're, they're trying to feed their family. And I don't know if you have more than one child two, or, or no children. Sometimes the, the finances are tight. And um, maybe you're at a place where you just, man, I could really use some help. Let me just ask you that, to do this, to invest and look in someone else's life. Maybe this is an opportunity to do that. Very simply, we're looking at reaching people all across our city. And gift cards is a really simple way to do that. It puts dignity back into the hands of, of people who need some help. They can purchase gifts. They can purchase food supplies for a great Christmas uh, dinner. And simply all we're asking for you to do is bring in a gift card, $25 gift card either to a Walmart, a super center, a, a place where they offer not just food, but maybe um, some shopping for the kids as well. And parents can buy whatever they wanna buy for their families. So if you can help us with this, we're looking at raising about $5,000 to, to meet needs all around our community. Lots of great needs this year. So if you wanna bring in a gift card, bring it to the church, $25, denominations. Bring as many as you can. Thank you in advance for that. Uh, let's listen to this message at this time. What name could contain such a glory? In the cool breezes of Eden, wrought from the infant earth, one arose, the voice of his creator speaking his identity to life. Adam, man, and as heaven waited short with breath, the Creator spoke yet another, Eve, mother of all the living. So it was with Abraham, named in the promise as the father of nations, Peter, the rock upon which the church would stand. The name called to life the destiny within. The name set the stage for all that was to come. And unto us a child was born. And what name could contain his glory? For he was mighty God, as the universe gasped into being, flinging rays of light from his presence to pierce the void, to shatter the shadows to a tapestry of color. And he is mighty God, shattering our darkness, revealing our light, our truth in him. He was everlasting father when orphaned Israel needed a father's touch. When we, with grief-stricken cheeks, need the embrace of one who never leaves. When we have lost our way to dark horizons, it is our everlasting father who lights the way home. He is Prince of Peace. When, like Elijah, we need the still small voice in the turmoil's midst. When, like David, we need the melodies of his presence to soothe our troubled minds. He is sanctuary within our trials, shepherd guiding us to still waters. And yes, he is wonderful counselor. God who gives counsel in the chaos, crafting disorder in the calm and failure into beauty. He is a voice for the voiceless. He is dignity for the stateless soul. It is he who raised up a lowly shepherd to become a king. He who took the fishermen of Galilee and made them leaders of history. It is the counselor who redeems our lost years, breaking chains that have kept dreams imprisoned and joy confined. 
The name reaches across eternity, exclaimed by the splendors of galaxies, sung by the passions of angels, roared in heaven's fervor, exalted in creation's unfettered rejoicing. What name could contain him? What title? What soul? Renown? For this is our wonderful counselor. This is our mighty God. This is our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. What name could contain Emmanuel, God with us, Yahweh, the Great I Am. What name could contain the Word of Life, the Light of the World, the King of Kings, the Lord of All. We bow to the name that holds every other in its matchless worth. What name could contain such a glory? What name but Jesus? We cry, Jesus. We cry, holy is the name. Good morning, Journey Church, and Merry Christmas. We're so glad you're joining us online today. Today, I want to talk about remembering, the art of remembering. H have you ever been in a bad place in your life? I'm sure we all have, where one thing seems to be taking over all your thought processes and everything about your life, and you think to yourself, if I could only get this one problem solved, I would never complain again. And... Um, you know, we have all been there before. I can think of about a hundred times in my life where this was true. But what inevitably happens to us is that that problem does get solved at some level or another, but then we somehow forget that we used to say that if, we got, if it got solved, we would be uh, never complaining or never worried again or whatever you, you might say. And this really is the way of humanity. We're all prone to apathy and indifference to the good things that happen to us. And there's a technical term for this. It's actually called the negativity bias. The negativity bias is our tendency not only to register neg negative stimuli more readily, but also to dwell on those events. Um, it's also known as positive negative asymmetry. The negative bias means that we feel the sting of rebuke more powerfully than we feel the joy of praise. And you know this is true because um, when you, if you've ever been had a constructive criticism given to you, what do you remember? The construction or the criticism? Well, definitely the criticism. This is our way as humans. Uh, Danny Kahneman, who is an economist who, who won the 2002 Nobel Prize for his work, has designed studies in which patients were asked to imagine either losing $50 or gaining $50. And even though the amount is the same, the magnitude of the emotional response is significantly larger for those that lost the 50 bucks. Like if you lost 50 bucks, just imagine this for me, how mad you would be if somebody stole 50 bucks from you or you fell out of your purse or your wallet. But conversely, um, if somebody gave you 50 bucks, I mean, that's nice and you will not forget the $50 that someone gave you, but you don't have the same emotional reaction. We are wired uh, to think about negative experiences more frequently than we do positive ones. And you might be saying to me, well, what does this have to do with Christmas? What does this have to do with all the stress that I'm feeling around this time? And I would say everything. You see, if you're trapped in a negativity bias, then you will always have a difficult time focusing on anything good. Um, the psalmist talks about this. He's praying to God and he says this. He says, restore to me the joy of, my, of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. If, if you're trapped in a negativity bias, you'll never be able to see the wonder of the ad, of Advent, the wonder of the nativity scene, the wonder of the incarnation as it is. Instead, you will just mourn the fact that you have to have Christmas dinner with that irritating relative, or you have 50 things on your to-do list to do. Today, um, my hope in this next couple of minutes, my hope is that the scriptures will remind us afresh and anew about our need for Jesus and the great joy we have in Jesus coming. But to do that, first we need to go back to the beginning. 
You know, during the fall months, I've been studying the Torah and my personal devotions. The Torah is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And what I've been struck by again and again is how difficult it was to really serve God in this period of time. The most well-known of the laws are the Ten Commandments. And Many of us would be able to uh, say at least a few of those Ten Commandments, but the Torah is much more than the Ten Commandments. In fact, uh, scholars tell us that there's 613 commandments, or mitzvah they're called, covering many aspects of daily life, including family, personal hygiene, and diet. Let me just give you a smattering of these. Maybe you've read them before, maybe you've heard them. Uh, do not make different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two kinds of seeds. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. I mean, there are all of these laws and they are overwhelming and somewhat confusing sometimes. The question is, why did God, why did God ask the people of God to follow all these rules? Now, I think you can look to science and you can look um, to, to uh, history to understand, but there are theological reasons that God asked his people um, the first to follow all these rules, the first one is to remind people, to remind his people that God is holy, that he is holy and that he requires us to be holy. And, and the second reason he designed these laws is to remind us that it was impossible to become holy yourself. You know, um, this is a really good reminder. Whenever I get into the first five books of the Bible, I, I say, thank God that I, could, I couldn't have followed all those rules. I'm, I'm a basic, not a good rule follower at the best of times. Um, and these 613 laws are a lot. But God actually designed them, the New Testament tells us, so that we would know that we could never be as holy as God ourselves. We could never come to that kind of holiness. Now, my lack of being able to be right with God isn't really a big problem if I am just living for the here and now. Because if I'm just living for like getting to all my to-do list done and getting all the stuff accomplished to climb some ladder that I'm trying to climb, then, then it doesn't really matter. But it is a huge problem, maybe the biggest problem of our life. Yes, the biggest problem of our life. If I see my life in light of eternity, I want you just for a minute to look at this diagram that we've created. You see, if we look at our lives in light of eternity, this is definitely, this gap between ourselves and God is definitely the biggest problem we have ever faced. How are we going to get right with God before our time, our very small time here on earth ends and we have to live the rest of our life in eternity? But we don't often think about the big picture like this, do we? As humans, we primarily think about what's happening right here and now. Or if we're really looking ahead, we might be looking at what we're going to have for dinner uh, two days from now or on the weekend. But one of the Bible's primary jobs is to have you think about bigger and cosmic ideas. If you come to church or you come to your personal devotions and are only thinking about the things right in front of you, then you have failed to let the Bible really do its work on you. And this is what the anticipation of Advent does for us. At Christmas time, we get to remember why God sent Jesus to earth to begin with. We get to focus on why this matters. And uh, um, if you aren't intentional, I'm telling you this, if you're not intentional about this, that negativity bias will get you every single time. This is why for adults, often the wonder goes out of Christmas because we are no longer like, wow, God did this for me. So the gap between he and my, um, between God and myself can be bridged. And instead we focus on, you know, all the annoying problems right in front of us. We're left worrying about the turkey and our budget and our decorating skills instead of remembering what's really important. And this is why God calls us to be a remembering community. We have to be people that call ourselves back to remember what Advent was, to remember the purpose of it, to remember that in this space of Advent where we uh, anticipate the birth of Jesus, the anticipation should cause us to say, yes, God, you didn't just come as a little baby in a manger so we could sing songs and decorate trees. You came as a baby in a manger to close the gap between myself and you. 
You know, the word remember is found 240 times in the Old, Testament, Old and New Testament. Let me just give you a, a smattering of those verses. De Deuteronomy 6.12 says, Take care lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Deuteronomy 8.2 says, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing the you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. First Corinthians 11, two says, now I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I delivered them to you. Paul is calling the people of God to, he's commending them for remembering. Isaiah 46, nine says, remember the former things of old for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me. You see, in order to live in the here and now with proper perspective, we must remember where we have come from. So here are a few things to remember this Christmas holidays. Number one, before Jesus came, the way to God was cumbersome and difficult. And we can know that by remembering what it was like for the children of Israel as they trudged through uh, the wilderness, as they followed those laws. It's really, really important that we remember because it makes the grace of Jesus that much greater. The second thing is before Jesus, I was trying to do everything on my own. Maybe you're watching today and you just thought you would watch because um, it's Christmas time and church seems like the right thing to watch. You know, um, oftentimes we think that uh, when we become religious or spiritual, that that is an act of us getting good. But the Bible actually doesn't say that. It says the opposite, that we actually can't do any of the getting good on our own. It's impossible for us. And before Jesus came, we, we would have had to try to do everything on our own. But when Jesus came, he actually came and took our sin upon him. He took our sin and removed it as far as the east is from the west. Before Jesus, we were trying to do everything on our own. But now we have this Messiah, we have this Savior who has come, who came and incarnated himself amongst us. And this is amazing. The third thing is this, the fact that God came to earth in human flesh for me is astounding. Just for a minute, just for a minute, I want you just to take a few moments and think about how awesome it is that God came for you. He came as a little baby. He humbled himself and came in a manger. He came weak without anyone, any covering on him, born in a stable for you. This is amazing. This is particularly amazing in light of what we know of how holy God is, how awesome he is. So how do we remember today? How do we remember, where, how do we not get trapped in a negativity bias, looking at the, small, the, the problems right in front of our face? How do we actually begin to say, God, help me to live with a bigger and broader perspective? The first thing is this, identify where you are. Figure out what you're really focused on. What are you really focused on this week? What are you, what are you choosing to call to memory? Secondly, ponder your past. Remember what God delivered you from. Maybe you've never come to Jesus and this is a chance to say, God, I, I'm looking at all my past and I've been trying to do it on my own. Jesus, I need you to come and, and make me a new creation. And third, let God break in on you with fresh, fresh revelation of his incarnation. Let the truth and the relief of the incarnation wash over you. You know, every year I, I pray at this time, God, would you give me a new revelation of Advent, of your coming. And this year I was just like really astounded that God sent his son to, to, to come to earth so that we could live, uh, we could experience the grace of Jesus. That before it was difficult to come to God, but God now has made a way for us. This is absolutely astounding. And I'm praying today that God would make the message of the, of the manger come alive to you again. That he loves you with that kind of a love. He loves you with a love that says, I'll inconvenience myself so that you can come to me and have eternal life with me. Journey Church, I'm praying for all of us this season that we would experience a fresh and a new, the reality of Jesus, the Lord, coming in the form of a baby. God, I just pray for my friends today 
that you would give them a fresh revelation of you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move in their homes as they watch and that God, you would stir them to surrender everything they are to you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So I hope that made sense to you. I pray the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. If we can do be a part of your uh, connection today at all, please let us know how we can support you. Uh, for more information of some of the upcoming events and things that are happening here at Christmas time, make sure you go to our website, our events page. Blue Christmas is coming. Our, uh, that's both online and in person, December 19th. And also Christmas Eve, we have an in-person service only. So if you're watching us online, uh, we won't have that available to you online, but join us in person if you can. Otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing you the following Sunday. God bless you. Have an incredible week, everyone, and uh, pray to see you back here next week. Bye now.